Good morning, everybody. I'm Vincent Mazo. This is Listings to Leads, and thanks for joining me for our class on Facebook and Google advertising. We have been doing this for about 15 years. We have a lot more than just Facebook and Google ads. Uh, we have a lot of tools to help you get more listings. We have really great content and tools for social media. We definitely have software from both Facebook, Instagram, and from Google. And so running ads in our platform is frankly very easy, right? We make it very easy. And I talk to a lot of realtors and they've had experience with Facebook. It's been, some has been good, some has not been good. And I think one thing to say about Facebook is it's not easy. It's not easy to run an ad successfully. And that's why we really, you should be using our software to run your ads. Google is infinitely worse. It's so much worse than Facebook that I would think, I, I ballpark it that one, four out of 10 agents have run it out on Facebook. One out of 10 agents have actually had success, good amount of leads, right? And it's even fewer that are converting those leads. We're going to talk about all those things, right? But with our software, you can easily run ads successfully for both buyers and for seller leads, okay? Bob is asking, and I appreciate you asking, Bob, in the GoToMeeting chat panel, there's a section that says handouts. Please open that up and uh, download. If you click on them, it should open them and print those and leave them on your desk. There are two there. And let's just go look at them real quickly. One is Facebook and Google Ads, which is what we're talking about here today. And it's got the kinds of things you can do. So you want this in front of you because if you want buyer leads, I run ads on homes that are just listed, coming soon, active. If you want seller leads, run ads on properties that are late stage, sold. Um, we also have PDF guides for buyers and sellers. So you can run ads on those on both Facebook and Google and get um, leads, uh, buyers or seller leads. You can also create um, landing pages for your target market. And that's a big, you, you're going to want to do that. And then on Google, I, I definitely recommend that you use Google for getting listing leads. Don't try to get buyers from Google. Facebook is a slam dunk. The leads are cheaper. Focus there. John saying, hey, I have a difficult time converting uh, to Google leads. And I want to speak to that kind of right away. Okay, so we're going to, that question of conversion is a big deal. And Scott and I are actually working on the system to make, always to make it easier and to make it more powerful. But also this year, I think in 2025 coming up, we're going to have a lot of resources where to make converting leads a lot easier and, and to help you do that. So before we dive into all those things, I want to remind you, we do live training classes every week. Today is Facebook and Google. We have it here on leadgenwebinars.com. I'm going to send this to everybody right now, but if you're watching this in a recording, leadgenwebinars.com, you can learn about Facebook and Google, getting started for people who want to just get the basics and then top tools for more listings. Those are really the ones that I focus on. And then we talked about a couple of flyers that I want, that I've asked everybody to print. They really are the outlines for today's class and top tools for more listing. Now, every class that we do is recorded and the, all those recordings are right here. And I know agents, I appreciate you hanging out here with me today, but I know agents don't like to sit and watch one hour videos, right? I just sent the link to you right here. And I will say this though, you know, we all know that NAR has created a settlement that is impacting the real estate industry. And you probably know that you're, you're more comfortable with your, your compensation when it comes to listings, right? As if that is you, I have a class that I do every two weeks called top tools for more listings. It's right here. And it, it says underneath it, custom targeting for your local market. That's really important. Here is get started and somewhere as my other classes and Scott's doing classes too. So definitely get on this page. The building of ads through your platform has been extremely easy and easy connect cam has been my doubt. Wait, okay. Connecting that camping ad to Facebook has been my downfall. It's been frustrating anywhere. 
Can you re-ask that question, Mark? So running the ad is easy. Connecting the campaign ad to Facebook has been my downfall. So I don't get, I don't understand that. Like, what does that mean? I, I need some more detail there. So I'm going to tell you guys this top tool f- tools for more listings. I highly recommend every agent watch two or three versions of that class because I don't say the exact same thing all the time. And you are, you're going to want to know how to do that. Now, Scott's doing this. I'm going to send this to everybody. I highly recommend that you subscribe to our channel right there. There's a button next to our logo. Scott's doing one minute videos. Okay. And he's doing one or two every day. And some of them are coming from responses from our clients in the mastermind group. And so we're hearing what's really working. And so he's in one minute showing you, this is how you do it. And then of course we have other, we have a lot of new tools and content. So Scott's sharing it that way. So you don't have to sit down for an hour. You can just listen and watch and see, and in one minute, get some value. So that's our YouTube channel. Definitely check that out. Now here's our mastermind group. And this is a private group on Facebook. If you're not in it, you won't be able to find it. So please ask our support team to get you in there. But since this class is about Facebook and Google, I want to talk about, there's a lot of examples. I want to talk about this one right here because your questions, a couple of questions have already come up about conversion. And I want to tell you how this guy, uh, as well as many of our other agents are thinking about conversion. And I don't know what the problem is here with my, with my browser, but let me refresh that. I'm not sure what's happening here, but my thing is acting weird. Oh, that's what I need right now. Okay. Let's go back. This, the, the story of Brian Matheson, for some reason, I can't pull it up is that Brian, Brian has a team, he has an office account and he did a, he's, he was showing in the mastermind group. I'm going to try it one more time. That, what the, what a chip. Okay. Sorry. I'm not going to make this go through that anymore. This guy right here has, was running ads in Texas. Okay. And what he's doing is in, in our group, in the mastermind group, he showed us the kind of listing that he was running an ad on. And this is like a, this is a, by the way, this is in his account. He's actually created a landing page for commercial property, right? And which you can do that. And then once you've done it, you can run ads just like on, like I'll be showing you. Let me show you what Brian was doing. And then we'll talk about it. And we're going to talk about conversion as well, because Brian was, he put a video inside the mastermind group and he says, Hey, we were using this sold property to generate seller leads. And that's definitely something that every agent has to do if you want more listings. Okay. And I'm going to click on generate seller leads here. And so in his video, it's about two minutes long. It's really, it's pretty short. He's showing his agents how to run an ad for a sold listing. You go to generate seller leads, you click create Facebook ad, and you create a listing ad on a home that is sold or pending or under contract. All the language is the same. That sale is going to affect your home value. When it's an early stage, like when it's a home that is for sale, let's click on buyer leads and this will show us our properties that are for sale. Then that's going to get uh, buyer leads, right? So you can use the same listing to get both buyer and seller leads as you're working through the, you're working through the listing. So what he says in the video, and I want to point out, leave it on lead ads. Lead ads means that your leads, when people see the ad, the, they click on it. And when they click on it, their name, email, and phone number is pre-populated from their profile. Okay. And when that happens, People are just like, do you want that information? Do you want the information on that home? Do you want your free home value? Do you want whatever it is you're offering? There's a question. Do you want that? Right. And there's one answer. There's one, there's two answers. One is yes. And that means that they're submitting that information. And the other is there's an X and you just close out. Right. So only the people who really want that information, they don't have to type anything in and they just click and they send you their information. So that gets to how do you convert? Because now you have their name, phone number, and email. 
And my guess is all of you want to hit that cell phone and grab that and call that person immediately, right? Kind of speed to lead. Now, I don't know if you guys know this. I don't know what kind of phones you're using, but if you have a cell phone, you can tell who's calling you and you know, I don't, I don't know this person. I'm not going to take that phone call. That happens quite a lot there. I'm sure you all know there are so many scams out there on, on email and there are scams on your phone. Like people don't want to be taking those calls. And if they by chance do take the call, they're getting called by a solar company or by you or who knows, right? So they're really trying to get off the phone and they might say, oh, I don't know what that's about. Or, I don't know what you're talking about. That's a common thing. This guy, Brian, if you watch the video, he's telling his agents, I ran a home, I ran an ad on a home in Conway, Texas, and I generated 114 leads just like this. All he did was click that green button right there. He didn't change anything. Okay. And he said, of those 114 leads, we converted four into buying a home. Okay. So in case you don't know, when you run an ad on Facebook, what we're doing here is we're telling you it's a $35 budget for seven days. Facebook sets the price per lead. And on average, buyer leads cost about $3 each. Okay. So if you take three and divide that into 35, you can expect around 11 or 12 leads. And that's what, so to get 114 leads, he probably spent around $350. Okay. And you can do that. Now I do want to speak to conversion because as we talk about, we want to convert leads. What do you think the industry standard of lead conversion is? It's 1%. Okay. We have a lot of clients here, including Brian, who convert at four and 5% on Facebook, our Facebook leads. So if you have a hundred leads and you're converting four, you're at 4%, right? He had a 114 leads and he converted four into buyers. And I'm pretty sure the commission on four home purchases in Texas is more than $350. So the ROI is there. But also if we get to that, and I'm going to see if I can do that one more time. If we get to that, that is problem here. It's not really working. All right. We'll forget messing with that. He, he then flips the property to sold. And I'm going to tell you how he converts them in just a second, but I want to show you what he did after he sold the property. He flipped the property to sold and he runs an ad same way listing ad, but this time it's on a home that is sold. Okay. Lead app so that we get our leads name with name, email, and phone number. Nobody's typing it in. And he did exactly what I'm doing right now. Actually, in the, if you go look at the post, you'll see my question. I said, Brian, did you do anything custom to make, to, to, to run this sold ad? And he says, no, I just clicked it. And I clicked that button. And that was it. It was a $50 ad. Facebook was charging him $4 a lead that day. And he converted one of those leads in the very first day into a phone call. Okay. And so here's the thing. This is what Brian does. When he is getting a lead with a phone number, he's texting them and he's texting them real simple questions. Hey, that home is in Conway. It's worth 400 grand. Is that fit in your budget? What's your budget? Right? Simple question, not a paragraph. It's a text message on a phone. And they're like, oh, thanks. So yeah, no, I'm looking for, you know, something at 300 or whatever. Go back. Hey, do you, how many bedrooms do you need? So you're asking simple questions. You're not writing a big novel on a cell phone and they are feeling, getting comfortable answering the questions. If they're not comfortable answering questions then you really, you don't have much to work with. But if somebody saw the ad like this ad right here, let me show you where this ad is showing up. If somebody saw the ad, it's because they were on Facebook. Okay. And this is actually from our mastermind group. But if I scroll down Facebook and this is the news feed, oh, maybe there's a big problem with Facebook. That's why it's, your ad is right here. So right where we see this big red message here, if you scroll down, usually the second post, anytime anybody logs in is an ad and you can see here, nothing quite working. So Facebook's probably getting jammed up today. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So 
when they see the ad, it might say, Hey, this is, I got an open house or whatever, get your home value or download this report on 12 mistakes to avoid on selling a home, right? All of these things are what's going to be visible right here. And when they click on it, this little window pops up and it says, here's your name, phone number, and email. Would you like that information? Yes, that's it. So these people are responding to your ads. It's a question of how do you engage them? And so what I'm suggesting to you is you text those people with really simple questions until they get bored of that and tired of that. And, and then either they or you suggest a phone call when it's appropriate, right? A lot of clients, a lot of agents want to call that person and have them in their office in the next few hours. And that's just not realistic. But these people are thinking about buying a home or thinking about selling. And our ads, actually, those leads, there is a question that says, I'm just dreaming or I need to do this in three months or six months or nine months, something like that. So you often get that. If it says it's just dreaming, it's still worth probing. It's still worth finding out. So the message here on conversion is start by texting with simple one question at a time. Once they're comfortable, suggest a phone call. And once you get in that phone call, you close the meeting, right? And back to the story of Brian Matheson, he ran this ad with a sold property. He was getting charged $4 to seller lead, text them. And in the morning text closes a, a four o'clock phone call. And in that four o'clock phone call closes a listing appointment where the gentleman wants to sell a home for 400 grand and buy another for 450. So one $50 ad with one $4 lead generated $850,000 in production. That's, that doesn't happen all the time, right? If you're running an ad for $50 in, in his case, he's probably got 12 leads. If he converted one, which he did, that's about a, an eight to 9% conversion rate. That's super high, but that definitely happens. I, if you go to our, I'm going to show you something over here. If you go to our YouTube channel and you go to the very front, we have a video there of a lady from Maryland. This is actually, I think last spring. Oh, you know what? They are working out in my street. I hope they didn't damage my internet. Can you guys see me? Can you hear what's going on? Cause things feel a little bit slow here. That might be the problem. So yes, thank you. Okay. Okay. So on the homepage, thank you, Doug. Thank you. Got it. Thank you. There's a lady right here. She ran one open house ad for $35 in Maryland and has three active buyers and one listing from one ad. This is an outlier. This doesn't happen with every ad, but it can, especially if you have a good looking home that gets a lot of interest. Her in that story, that definitely was a good looking home. In the Brian Mathian story, that was a, a, the same kind of thing. It was a good looking home. It generated a lot of traction, right? So anyway, let's get back to how we create ads. And oh, actually somebody had a question about, and this is actually an important question. So I'm going to just totally divert where we are. When you create a, a business page, you, um, have to have a, a card. You have to have, let's see, actually I'm not connected to our business page anymore, but you know what? I have a business page for my music project. So let me show this to you real quickly and don't get too freaked out, but, but you see this right here. So this, the, one of the, one of the agents on the call is saying, I can't get my credit card in. This is my business page for my music project, right? So this is a record and Facebook is saying, boost the post. All right. And what, when you boost a post, you pay for the post, right? And you have to have a credit card in there and that's how it works. And, and so when, if you're, if you can't get your credit card inside of your account, that's the easiest way. You just go there and it's the way you got to pay for it. And then it, it takes you right to where you need to, um, Enter a credit card. I think over here in Ad Center, if there is going to be a section as well, and I probably have to switch so that I'm looking at it that way. In Ad Center on your business page, type in the words payment method. Look for the words payment uh, right here, payment settings. 
right? That's where you enter your credit card, all right? And the reason why you want to do that is when you come to listings to leads, you're connecting your credit, your Facebook ad account to your listings to leads account. So you see here when I'm running an ad, it's sponsored by one of our business pages. When you run your ad, it's sponsored by you. And that's a great thing for your branding, okay? And so when you're running an ad and you spend $50, probably 2,000 people will see that ad. You will only get a dozen or so leads, but you're also building your brand at the same time. If I, I know I said this earlier today, you should all be running one ad a week. You should, when it comes to Facebook, and I literally mean this for any brand new agent, if you're an agent with like three or four or five listings, you have to spend more than what I'm going to say. Every agent should be running one ad every week on Facebook. Okay. And you should be spending maybe $50 a week. If you're going out there looking for buyer leads, divide 50 by three and expect 15 buyer leads every, every week. If you're running ads on seller leads, those cost more. They cost somewhere between 15 and between seven and $15 each. So you're going to get fewer leads if you're going after seller leads, right? They're just more expensive because Facebook knows you want those more. So I'm going to go over here to the landing page section and talk about one of the bigger mistakes that agents make all the time. And I just talked to a lady this week who did this. So you see, when you log in and you go to your landing page section, there are a number of landing pages that are there. The problem is they're really general and you really want to make sure where was that lady? I can't remember. Let me just show you. You each have this in your account. She was in Florida. That's what she was in Florida. Yeah. And she was using this to run an ad. And you might think, I want to do that. I want listings. I'm going to go do that. Let me show you how you do that. You see where it says marketing tools? You click that. The first marketing tool is run a Facebook ad, right? I click on it. And it's so intuitive that you think you got to do it. <laughs> you have to do it, right? And you think, oh yeah, I'm going to do this. Now, yours won't say Folsom. We were working on this, so it says Folsom. Yours is just going to be like home values. Get your own value, right? But you're going to have that picture. And I remember this lady was sitting in Naples, Florida, right? So all she did is typed in Naples and, and let it rip. And I said, does that look, does that picture look like Naples? Like, does that look, I've been to Naples a few times and they're probably prettier pictures or local things that would make me think Naples. That picture doesn't make me think that, right? And she's like, no, it doesn't. Well, that's the first thing you got to change that, right? Another thing that can help on here is that you could say something like 20 homes sold in Naples. And actually she did that. I, it actually, I'm confused. She was right here. She was a neighbor in about 15 minutes from me. And I'm going to show you what she did. But anyway, let's just finish this. 20 homes sold here last month. The high was whatever. And boom, that should get your attention. But the problem is this 15 mile radius. Now, I don't know if you guys have been to Naples. But it looks on a map like this. Okay. And I told her what I'm going to tell you right now. So she wasn't in Naples. She was actually in Danville. But here, if I open this in maps and Google maps, the 15 mile radius, which is the minimum you can do is it's getting a wide area, maybe not horrible. Let me show you what this lady was doing and if this might impact you. So she changed the photo. I remember she changed the photo and she put like a nice dining room. It was really a high end dining room. And instead of this suburban look, which definitely doesn't look like where she was, and she wrote the ad after she changed the photo. And in case you didn't notice, you've changed a photo right down here on the left. Okay. And you just upload a photo. It's gotta be 2000 pixels wide. And I definitely recommend everybody does that with their free home values because we're embedding it all the time, all over your tools. So make sure that core landing page here looks like your market. Okay. You're going to get better results. Now, what she had done is she changed that photo. Instead of that suburban thing, she put like a photo of this nice dining room. And then she ran an ad and she was targeting 
she wants th th this this she wants listings in one of my neighboring cities and she went over here and she said three things one about danville one of, and then another line about san Ramon. and she and then what was the other? alamo yeah so nothing in alamo is priced under two million dollars so she said i think she said something like september sales are in alamo's high was five million San Ramon's high was 3.5 and Danville was 4 million, something like that, right? Which I thought for a new agent who has never taken a class, and they, she did go look at our YouTube. Uh, she just figured it out herself. And she even knew to make that photograph look like something, it's a little generic, but it's a little bit better than that. And let me show you the problem that I told her. I said, God, yeah. she's like, I'm not getting any results, right? And that's why I'm making this class for you or, or explaining this, you might think I'm just yammering on about nonsense, but if you live in a dense area, you have to be careful with Facebook. You could be wasting your time and money. This is Danville. This little town over here, that's Alamo, right? And San Ramon is right here. And what we're looking at, this is Danville. San Ramon is literally five minutes. It's two minutes away, two, two miles away. When you run an ad on Facebook, it's minimally 15 mile radius. Okay. This right here, this is probably a 15 mile radius. And I asked her, I said, how many people, how many homes are in Alamo, Danville and San Ramon? And I could tell you, I just know this from college It's between 50 and a hundred thousand homes, right? These are three small towns all adjacent and they're expensive, beautiful homes, beautiful land. It's an awesome place to live. Yeah. So I, I said, I know why you want to build your business there. But when you run an ad on Facebook saying, and, and even in the ad was fairly good, literally 2 million people are going to see this ad. Everybody on this map are going to see this ad and you're targeting between 50 and 100,000 people. Can you see how that ad might not work very well for that lady? And do you live in an area where your market is like that? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, do you live in a dense area where there's another town five minutes away? Because if you are creating a page and let me just point out, you can create landing pages for your favorite farm markets. You absolutely should be doing them. I have another town called Orinda. It's right next to me, right? So if we look at Danville, this is Orinda over here, right? I live right here. And that's San Francisco over there. So this is all awesome bedroom community stuff, right? 20,000 people live in Orinda. And if I, anybody wants to go run an ad, they have the same exact problem. There's like more than a million people seeing this ad. That is the problem. So I'm going to share with you, and this is true if you want listings. And let me speak to that again. Remember I told everybody to download the flyers and one says create a custom audience for high quality listing leads. And this other flyer, which talks about top tools and more listings, it says upload a custom audience to Facebook for better targeting. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is there are a number of companies out there that will sell you lists of homeowners with equity. Okay. And you can get their name, phone number, email, and address. This is really important if you're going to be in real estate, because I can tell you you're going to need listings to survive. And we've all, that's always been the case. People do it with buyers. There are challenges with that. We don't need to go through that. And a lot of realtors have figured out, I need to get competitive on getting listings. So what I am telling you here is going to put you at the front of the race. Get that list with name, phone number, email, and address. Okay. Now, if we go back to here. You will notice that there are tools. This is the top tools for more listing. You can mail out tools to that list. You can mail out letters. They're great. You can upload a custom audience. You can take that list and upload it to Facebook. And now you're targeting those people. And that's exactly what I told that lady. I said, go buy that list of these homeowners and put it in, in one list on Facebook and target and just call it like, I don't know, East Bay home, right? Or whatever, Danville homeowners. And she will know that when she's running that ad, it's only showing to people 
who have equity, because that's the thing. When you go to this company, say, I need it to have minimum five years equity. The reason why I'm telling you to get name, phone number, and email is when you upload it to Facebook and you do that over here, you go to our ads page. Now, remember, I told you that your Facebook ad account is connected, right? That's the first thing you tell me there's going to be a big blue button. You connect, you tell us what business page, and that's how we brand. And that's how we charge a credit card. There's a blue button here that says create audience. You can call that Danville homeowners, right? Nobody's going to see this except you. This is going to live when we create it here. We're just helping you do it easily. Got to be 1000 leads deep. So if you're in a neighborhood with 500 leads, go get another 500 from an adjacent neighborhood that has to be minimum 1000 leads deep. When you click upload, it uploads it to us. And when you click import, it pushes that into Facebook. So you will have a list, even if you stop working with us called Dan to homeowners, right? And then when you run an ad, you can target those people. I'll show you that in just a second. My plus leads most likely sell and postcards. Yeah. We're actually working on an integration with my plus leads. I don't know. We're working on them being things at once, but if, do they sell that kind of list mark with like people with equity? I know that they do like expireds and fizzbos, but you need a list with name, email, and phone number. And here's why. Let me show you. When you buy that list, it usually has like 20, 30 columns of data, right? Like square footage and bedrooms and this and that. Your list has to have only these four headers. It has to look exactly like this. Email, number, first name, last name. When you upload it, Facebook takes that name and phone number and they go look for these people because we all have our name and phone number in there. Cool. Cool. Thank you, Mark. And so they get that, they get this list and they say, okay, we found them. We got their profiles. We're going to put them in a little list that only the people in Facebook see. And when you run the ad, it only shows it to those people. I'll show you what, how you do that in just a second. So Mark is saying that my plus leads, you can pull it by neighborhood. And that's great. That's great. Uh, I'll give you another story about that. Let's finish up. Cause he said, you can pull that list by neighborhood. Let me show you a place I, I mentioned, I live in Lafayette right? 24,000 people. You see this little area here, Release Valley. I live right here. This thing here has beautiful homes on acreage. You can't get in there for under 2 million and it goes up to 10. So I really want to dominate that. There's only 750 people homes there. So I could actually create a landing page that says Release Valley. I could put a picture in it. That's just says, what is your Release Valley home worth? But if I ran an ad on Facebook, you know that I would be targeting a million people that don't live in Release Valley, only like 750 live, right? That's why that, if you can do that by neighborhood, like Mark is saying, I might find a list of 750. But then I would tell you, then just go and pull the people that live over here, adjacent, and mark it and make sure that list is 1,000 people deep and go to create audience and move and import it into your Facebook account. Once you've done that, you can then say, I'm going to do a landing page because I created a landing page for Release Valley or for Danville, or I think I have one for Arenda, which is that town of 20,000 people. And I like to do the ad from here and there's a couple reasons. So I'm, I'm going to give you really some really food for thought. There are two ways of using a landing page uh, and one is to drive traffic to it. And one is to capture leads using Facebook lead forms. And I'm going to type in the zip code so that this will pull in the sales data and I'm going to leave it on lead ads. I'm going to tell you why I'm going to tell you what this will tell you what this is. Now by default, there's going to be a 15 mile radius. If I type in Orinda here, right. And cause I showed you on the map that a million people are going to see this ad that don't live in Orinda right here. It says retarget current leads or custom audiences. And I could type in the name of my custom audience, right? I have a bunch of custom audiences. I got one right here. It would probably, if I did this, it would say Orenda homeowners or something like that, right? Or release alley homeowners, right? And then there could be, there, there's a little area. Right there. But this is Orenda. That old theater right there is nearly a hundred years old now. Everybody in Orenda knows that. These are the stats for Orenda. And now my list could be literally homeowners with more than five years equity in Orenda. This is how you do a home sold ad. Okay. If you want to go out and lob this generic thing out, you know, that's easy to do too. You might get some results depending on where you are. Okay. 
I mean, I have, I talk to people all the time that don't get results from that. There was another thing that I mentioned, which is I ran this as a lead ad, meaning if somebody saw this and they clicked it, it would say, it would say, what is your name, phone number, and email? And it's auto populate. It also asks how soon do you need to sell? And they could give you an, whatever option is. What it doesn't ask is their address, right? And so that throws agents off, right? It's like, what do I do? That's not their address. You actually have this page because that's what you were driving on. So you would have a page that has that same picture and you can actually go over, let's see if I can get there here. I remember I'm showing you that I ran an ad in Orinda and you got the lead because we emailed that lead to you. And if I type in Orinda right here, that landing page that we used in the ad is going to show up, right? I like to run lead ads because I like, I, if you want to convert, I think you can convert higher, faster with a name, email, and phone number. So if you take that lead and they, and they responded to that ad on Facebook and you only have their name, email, and phone number, you can text them and say, Hey, I see you want your home value. Love to get that for you. Can I get your address so we can like put that number together? They give you the address and you type it in right here, right? And you do that. And then they say, okay, they're waiting. You've, they've sent you their address. You went to the landing page that you originally built to run the ad. And then you drop this in, right? And it's going to say, great. We have your information. Here's your home on the map. They're not looking at this. You're doing this yourself, right? And say, okay, what are you interested? I need to sell. So just thinking about selling, right? view my report. So since you have their email address, because that came in the original lead, you can literally do this. And now we're looking at the range of what this home is worth. High, medium, low. We get this from onboard infometrics. These buttons here that are gold, those are all call to actions. Any one of these, I can download this as long as I give you my information, which I guess in this case, we don't need your information because we already have your information. So you can just download it for free. But here, if I wanted to schedule something, it's all call to action. It's all, it's all capturing leads, right? Once you've done this, we have emailed these values to the person. We also emailed that to you. I like that because let me show you the other way of doing it. And if you create the landing page here and you customize it here and you click marketing tools here, we bring you to Facebook and Instagram ads. And our default is traffic. Okay. It's traffic. And what does that mean? That doesn't mean that when we do that, we are getting the name, phone number, and email from the profile. No, it means they click on the ad and they land here and that, and then this works how I showed you, right? You type in your address, but here's the funny thing about this. People are really comfortable putting in their address, get value. I, I see this all the time on solar stuff. And I stop all the time. Right. And it's like, okay, there's your home. Give us your email. At least 50% of people will walk away without giving you an email. They don't want the, the value that much. They don't want your spam. They don't want your email. Okay. So when you're running an ad and you're doing this, you're only going to get leads with addresses. So got to ask yourself, can you convert a lead with an address or can you convert a lead with a name, phone number, and email easier? Which one is going to be easier for you to convert? If it's, if you think that if you have addresses and you can convert that, those easier, run traffic ads, just like we, we default there, right? If you want to do it as lead ads and let Facebook get you the contact information, then do that. Okay. There's also video views and, and. I don't know if you guys have get, oh, Spokio gets that kind of list too. That's great. So the video views, if you are doing a video and we definitely have clients, let's see if Facebook's working. Yeah. We definitely have clients who do videos of, of areas, right? Like they'll walk in the neighborhood and they'll say, Hey, you know what? I'm the, the agent here in, in whatever town or this neighborhood. And they're literally walking and talking with a camera. And they're like, this is the home sold. This is what's going on this year. Facebook's still having trouble. You should look up this guy's name, Chris Winstead. Yeah, Facebook's definitely got an attitude to that. Chris Winstead and Brian Mathieson, they both have really solid stories that you can learn from. But the point is, is you can, and where it says change image and video, 
you can upload a video. So it's not that static picture. And as soon as they see it, it's you saying, hey, you know what? I'm the big realtor here in my town. And, and they're going to see that. And you can just say, click here if you'd like your home value. And it would capture their information or it would drive them to that landing page. You decide what can you convert easier, right? Sherry has a question. Is there a limit to your custom audience? I think the limit on the high end is 10,000. Is that what you mean? You can also, but let me say this, because I have a team in Dallas. They have three lists of 10,000 people each, right? Okay, good. That's it. And they put all three lists in the ad. We have a lot of custom audiences, but you could put in a few and it would target all those people on those lists. And so Mark is sharing with us in case you didn't hear me as rambling on. Spokio also sends that, sells that kind of information. So wherever you get it, I really think you got to make sure you get name, email, phone number, address. Okay. That's going to get you the best results from Facebook. Let's get back to the dashboard and talk about the other things that you can. So you might not have a listing and, and let me point this out. If you're a new agent and you don't have any listings, what should you do? If you're comfortable with it, go borrow a listing from your office and click here, grab a listing and drop in the zip code and the MLS ID and pull it in. And then you can run ads on it. That's going to get you buyer leads. If you're an agent, maybe you're a buyer's agent and you help somebody buy a home. That means that the home is sold. So if it works with you and your MLS, you can enter that manually and have a sold home, especially if you want to get seller leads. Now you can run an ad on a home that's sold. And also to that, I talk to a lot of agents and, and they work in whatever geographic area but they really want to build out this one particular town. Maybe it's the town they live in, or maybe this is where all the expensive homes are, but they want to build out that area, but they don't have any listings there. They could go to their office and say, Hey, can I borrow something that we sold recently or something that is for sale so that I can be talking about that market on my Facebook advertising. Either way, you're going to get buyer leads or seller leads. Okay. So you can definitely do that over there. Now I'm going to go back to the ad section because it's a little bit easier for us or for me. Now there are PDF guides and there are landing pages. We talked about landing pages. Let's talk about PDF guides. There are PDF guides for buyers and for sellers. Usually these leads cost more than the listing ad leads. Right. If you remember, I said buyer leads cost $3 each. On average, if I wanted to use any of the 40 PDF guides for buyers that are branded to you on every page, I can do that. They are a little bit generic and I don't see when you think of it and, and let me speak to the, the whole purpose of, I'm going to do this rent to own, right? I'm going to do lead ads. So my lead is pre-populated with name before phone. When we do this, all we got to do is type in a location and a 15 mile radius. It really doesn't matter. I can say Danville, if it goes 15 miles out, fine. I'm comfortable driving 15 miles for business. So that's going to work, right? Boom. You just create the ad. It's all pre-written. It looks good. It's got the text that works. Don't overthink it. Boom. But this is getting buyer leads and these leads will cost more than that ad. That's just like open house ad or for sale. It just cost more. If you're doing one of the 40 PDF guides for homeowners, those leads, those cost uh, on average about $10 each. So if you're running a home, an ad on a home that is sold, those leads cost about $7 each and the PDF guides cost around 10. They can be more. Okay. So that's what you can run those kinds of ads. And one thing I want to mention is you can also run ads on Google. And now right now, Google is an add on software. And it costs thirty dollars a month. And actually, if you haven't done it, I recommend this for agents. Last year, I would have said to listing agents, right? But I think you're all going to be to need to be listing agents. So you don't have to try this right now. But let me explain to you: you should try it. You definitely have a, a stable business. And I'm going to do a landing page ad on Orinda, just like I did on Facebook. Okay. Cause I have the page built already and create ad. Now, let me, can I get a quick answer? Have you run ads on Google before? Yes or no? 
I, I, I've been doing this class on Facebook advertising for almost 10 years. We connected Google advertising about two years ago. So I'm hearing no. And I think that a lot of agents have tried Facebook, not necessarily been successful, but they tried it. And there's reasons for that. It's actually not the simplest thing. In our world, it is the simplest thing. But Google is far worse. But in our world, because we want it to be easy for our clients, you have to choose a tool you want. It could be a landing page or it could be a PDF guide. And all you have to do is type in the town that you want to do a target, right? And click create ad. That is incredible because you don't know this, but this is, there's actually a Google software embedded here. And if you click on advanced options, you will notice that we have multiple keywords. When you're writing an ad on Google, you need multiple keywords. We have resources that we know what people are typing and that we review a couple times a year. So we know the keywords that people are typing. And we auto embed that for you. We also, when you write an ad on Google, you see this little F section here. This is actually the preview. Looks like this. These blue things here are called headlines. You, you need to write a minimum of three headlines, right? We put 15. You, this section here is called the description and you need to write a minimum of three. We put four. Okay. And Google will rotate these things. Right. They'll rotate these headlines and that until they get to the perfect ad for you. And Google, if you don't know, this is the number one website in the country, right? When I go to Facebook and when all of us go to Facebook, people are, they're looking at what their friends are doing. They're looking what they ate, where they're going on vacation. They're looking at their grandkids. They're looking at cats or whatever nonsense they're looking at. Right. But don't poop that because American adults, not American teenagers, spend 40 minutes every day looking at that news feed on their smartphone, in meetings, watching TV, standing at Starbucks, and even driving their car. They're looking at on Facebook. Okay. And so if they type in, how do I sell my home or what are the taxes on my home or whatever, your ad can be showing right in front of them on Google, right? It's that easy. Our software costs 30 bucks a month, but here's the thing. I don't actually... I recommend this for every agent, but you definitely got to watch your budget. Notice that our budget is a 15, a 50, sorry, 50 dollar a day. That's a lot of money for seven days. That's 350 bucks. Why is that? As I mentioned, Google is the number one website in the country. 86% of all searches that currently happen on the internet happen on Google and they charge for that. That that's like, that's their business model. They People go there, they get the answers they want. That's why they go. If somebody sees your ad and if you live in Dallas running an ad, just like this, Dallas home value, Dallas, Texas, whatever, those leads cost $30 each. If you're in Western Pennsylvania, $22 each. If you're in Utah, 17 and the price is different all over the country. I'm pretty sure if you're in Manhattan, they're like 50 bucks each, right? And if they were $60 each in Manhattan and you had a $50 a day budget, you would not get a lead until day two because that first $50 would sit there until the next day and you would get three, maybe four leads during the week. Okay. That's, that's how that works. I recommend if you're new to us that you use all the tools that you can. Remember this is face. There's all these things on Facebook you can do and you can get buyer leads and seller leads that turn into business. You can use this page here and you can use all these things on Facebook and print and on e-flyers and get more listings. Do that until you understand the machine, it's working for you, and then add your Google budget to your business. And you will get good leads. That's just how it is. It's just they're more expensive. So that's my story about Facebook and Google. I will say this. On the dashboard, when you come to the dashboard, there's going to be a, t a question for you to answer. Do you want buyer leads or do you want seller leads? Either way, if you, you click on what you want and everything here on this page is now 
these are the things that are going to help you get seller leads, right? Your later stage listings. You can market them with print, with email, with ads. You've got the seller landing pages. They're right here. You can click market. You're going to be shown how to run a Facebook ad. All the 40 PDF guides are all right here. You can run ads on those too, right? But the ad software straight to Facebook and Google, it's right here. And you can do your PDF guide ad here, your landing page ad here, or your sold listing ad right here. Here, landing page stuff. I don't recommend you do a custom ad on Google. You All those things that I told you are automatic, you have to do yourself. I also don't recommend this. This is a PDF guide. So if I type in, let's type in Lafayette, California, and here's why I don't recommend it. You create the ad and the leads here cost a lot of money. It's $50 a day budget. I think they're more like $10 a lead, maybe even more. And you're driving them to your property search page right here. And that's it, right? Boom. It's real simple. Yeah, we already know we're targeting Lafayette. So the problem is, not the problem, but if you run ads on Facebook, those leads are $3 each. And a, a lot of our clients are converting Facebook leads. So I think when you're trying to get buyers and you're trying to run ads for buyers, you want to focus on Facebook. If you want sellers, you can use Facebook and you can use Google. I'm pointing this over to our YouTube, not our YouTube, <laughs> sorry to our profile here. And I want to talk about this section here. When you sign up, we, we ask you to connect to social media three times. Okay. One for doing automated posting and one for doing social media content and another for running Facebook ads. You need to connect three different times. Okay. And here's the thing that I want you to understand. If notice we're posting to the best listing on Facebook. So let's go look at the Facebook. The, the best list. That's actually some kind of weird. Uh, let me see here. I'm gonna I'm gonna look for listings. This will be this will be better. Or what the heck? I think Facebook is really not happy today. Here's what I'm trying to show you. When you are auto posting to your Facebook business pages, only five percent of the people that follow you see anything you you put there. This is something that Scott did, right? On, on his page, right? And you might have us auto posting your landing pages. You might have us auto posting your PDF guides and our cool social content. You might also have us auto posting your listings. I hope you do. I hope you have all those things going out there. When you log in and you're connected to your page, you're going to notice very few people see that. And that's because Facebook is in a business to make money. And they want your money. And that's why you always see that button that says boost, which means give me some money and I'm going to show this to 2,000 people. When you put it on your business page, they're only showing it to 5% of the people who are on your business page. So I don't know how many people are on your business page. You might want to go look at that and then do quick math, right? It's only 5%. And so you know how many people are actually seeing. That's why running ads is way more powerful way more important. Are there any questions about what we've talked about? We've, I've actually ran right into the, I got one minute to spare, but I can hang out for more questions. Uh, do you have any? Please use the support page and ask our team to get into the mastermind group. Okay. And if you can look up the names, Chris Winstead, Brian Mathieson, there are a lot of people that talk to, but those two actually have really solid stories regarding Facebook um, and Dustin Fox. Yeah. I hope this helped you. If you haven't downloaded, click the handout section in this thing here. You're welcome, Lynn. And download those two documents. It's these two documents. And please print these and make sure you review. And, and I'm going to give you a, just a synopsis. You should be running one ad on Facebook every week. You should be mailing one of our tools, nearby homeowner letter, a home sold report, a postcard, twice a month to your favorite farm market. And you should be taking our e-flyers that are spread out all around our platform and blasting your CRM with them once a week. So what's going on? You're running ads in front of these people, you're mailing these people, and you're emailing these people. This is what any real company does. 
And if you're going to grow in real estate, you're going to need to be like those companies. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I hope this helped you. It will be on this YouTube channel right here. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and to check out our shorts, Virginia. Our, our video shorts. I think they're really helpful. Thanks everybody for joining me today. Have a happy Halloween. Yeah, that's right. I better get some outfit going here. Okay. Bye everybody.